Hi everyone, and welcome to our hands-on training exercise. In this exercise, you will learn how to derive a soil property, soil organic carbon, or SOC for short, in the Nmap box by applying machine learning methods, namely random forest and partial least squares regression. We will be working on an airborne image recorded in October 2015 by the high spec sensor over our bare or semi bare study site in Deming. This area in northern Germany is characterized by its glacial past and is largely used for agriculture. Here you can find relics of the Ice Age, such as kettle holes, small hollow shapes whose formation is attributed to the burial and subsequent thawing of an ice lens. Today, these structures are usually overgrown by vegetation or hold small ponds. Due to several reasons, sock accumulates in these areas and higher contents are measured. You can already guess from the darker soil color. Now, let's look at the data. Instructions on how to access and download the data can be found below. In addition to the imagery, there is a point data shapefile with 37 sampling locations and information on sock contents in gram per kilogram soil. Let's get going. If you haven't done so already, open your QGIS desktop. Please ensure you are running a current version and make sure you have an up-to-date Nmap box plugin installed. Instructions on how to install the Nmap box can be found in the info box below. Now, Launch the Nmap box by clicking on the Nmap box icon and have a quick look at the data that we provided for download. First, let's open the folder containing the airborne data. Here, you will find a raster image in BSQ format. As the name suggests, this is not satellite, but airborne data acquired by high specs, Wiener and Swerr hyperspectral cameras. Make yourself a little familiar with the data by visualizing the scene. Simply drag and drop the BSQ file into the Nmap box. As you can see, when you expand the image metadata, it's got 259 bands and 644 by 1265 pixels. The spatial resolution is 4 meters. Now, display the image by right-clicking on the raster layer in the Data Sources window and selecting Open in New Map. As you can see, most display options are disabled, so choose default colors. The image is now displayed in grayscale, and as you can see, a bare soil mask has already been applied. Actually, that was the last step in our data preparation. The image has previously undergone atmospheric and geometric corrections, and its spectral information was smoothed using a savitsky golai filter. If you click on the little spectrum icon in the menu above, and then almost anywhere in the grayscale image, you can see that we transform the reference spectra to first derivatives. They look pretty unfamiliar, don't they? There are more possibilities for data transformations, but this one is widely used in soil spectroscopy since it enhances the relatively weak spectral features present in soils. In addition to the image data, we provided a shapefile. You can simply drag and drop it in the data sources window and from there into the map view to display. This shapefile contains ground truth information. For example, the sock content at the point locations where we collected soil samples in the field. The soil samples have been sent to a laboratory for chemical analyses. Okay, I think we're on a good start to the analysis. Let's go.